Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. This video is all about how you can make money from your art just starting out with no followers online and no money or very little money. So this is a low overhead getting started in an art business video. I hope you find it helpful because um, this is what I did when I first started out and this is really before people were doing much on the internet and I think you'll find it uh, helpful if that's something that you want to do. And if not, then I guess this isn't the video for you. <laughs> so the first thing I would recommend if you are just starting out and you've got art skills and you want to make some money would be consider considering doing art parties. So when I first started off, I did art classes during the week and on the weekends, I would do art parties. And the reason I mentioned art parties and not art classes for this first thing is because when you do an art party, you're generally going to be doing that at somebody's home. So you can post on your Facebook page. Maybe you have like a, a community of friends or a community page. If you have like, a, you know, your town might have a little community page and you could post, um, I'm available for art parties. Here are the projects that we can do. I used to do polymer clay. Um, what we do actually polymer clay, one of the ones things that we did was I would get um, inexpensive silverware and we would make the polymer clay ha handles and I would send them home with directions for how to bake the clay so that it would be dishwasher safe and able to be used and whatnot. Um, you could do tie-dye, you could do batik, you could do um, all sorts of different art projects. Whatever projects you like to do, figure out how you can do it, what it's going to cost per child. I would set it up so it's like you got a minimum or you pay one price for up to 10 kids and then each additional kid is so ever, however many dollars extra. You'd have to figure out what you're using for supplies and what your um, market is like. I mean, this was 20 years ago. I was doing art parties. Generally, I think um, I charged, it was about like $10 per uh, per kid back then, or, but things are much more expensive now. So probably more like 15 or 20. But um, yeah, then you're guaranteed a certain set amount of money. So, you know, have a minimum of like 10 kids and it's this amount. Um, that way you can be guaranteed to make a certain amount of cash and it'll take you like two hours of your afternoon. Um, I would get a few projects done up ahead of time so that you can kind of advertise with on like your community community page, your own personal Facebook, make it shareable so friends can share it with other parents. And, um, and that's a great way to quickly make some money as an artist. I really like this, this particular uh, kind of job or, or offering because you're generally, you know, if you're working with kids, you have to have a personality to work with kids. You're going to be energetic and, and upbeat and friendly and, um, and whatnot, but it's kind of a low risk for parents because they're going to be right there and you're going to be in their home. So you don't have to rent a space. And, um, you know, if, if everything goes great, you might even be hired back to do lessons, or maybe if you put classes together in the future, you could advertise to the parents that went to your parties and um, and they might want to enroll their kids. So that would be my number one. Do an art, like a kid's art birthday party type offering. The next offering would be a paint party for adults, kind of like a um, sip and paint or something like that. Those are usually done through restaurants or bars, and you could call any restaurant that you frequent and ask them if they'd be interested. Generally, there'd be like some sort of split or maybe um, they would pay you a certain fee or you would get the you would get a fee from all your patrons and then the people would be there drinking and buying food and stuff so the the restaurant would be happy generally done on a night where they're not really busy so they're happy to have more people in so generally no overhead for you other than your materials and um, then you just charge each person whatever you need to charge them generally around here I think people pay around forty dollars to go to a uh, a paint and sip but Obviously different markets are different. Um, so you will need a little more overhead for this. You will need some table easels probably if you're doing acrylics and the palettes and paint and whatnot. I would recommend maybe like a, like a disposable palette, something like that. So you can clean up and get out of that restaurant in a fairly short amount of time. You're not, they're not gonna want you cleaning paint palettes in their sink. So like maybe disposable palette paper or um, a paper plate or something like that for a palette. And uh, those are really popular. So that would be kind of like a, a spinoff to the kids party idea it would be an adult party idea. And that can also go to like bachelor's party, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, fundraisers, uh, different things like that. I've done project grad. I've done obviously not a sip and paint, but like a paint party. I've done project grad. I've done fundraisers for schools. I've done, um, and, and, um, 
I've done, yeah, bachelorette parties or bridal showers. Uh, it's a lot of fun and there's lots of opportunities to do that if that's something you like to do. Again, you've got to assess what your personality is and if that's good for you, but it's a really wonderful way to make some money quickly with very little connections and um, with a small amount of overhead. You can even go to Michael's and get bulk packs of canvases and stuff. So it's the price has gotten pretty reasonable to be able to offer something like that. Another another offering would be to teach a class at a community center. So again, you're not on the hook for a large rent. Often you can pay like a you know per person price to the community center if they charge anything at all. Or you might even teach a class at a library where a library has a budget to pay an instructor. And then um, either the patrons pay the librarian or they it's like a free for the community thing, but the instructor gets paid. So that's something else you can do. You won't make as much money for a teaching situation like that as you would like a paint party, but you also have no risk. So that's another option for you as well. Another thing you can do if teaching isn't your thing is you could sell your, uh, you could sell personalized items. Now I wouldn't, I think that's a little bit better than trying to sell your own artwork or your own jewelry or the things you just make for fun on Facebook because, um, I mean, that might go all right, but I think a lot of times people are looking for personalized things. So I had a friend who did hair bows, like cheer bows, uh, which are these big bows that like you would do in like local, schools colors and people would buy them for like their kids that play sports, their girls that play sports. Um, you could do custom things like that. If you like to craft, you could do jewelry and hair bows and things like that in local sports colors or school colors. So people can buy those for their kids and grandkids. Those are really good sellers. Um, you could do commissions. So maybe you're really good at drawing animals. You could do pet portraits. Again, that's something that you could, you could do one up and you could take it to a pet store or a pet groomer or a vet veterinary office, especially if it's one that you personally use, like uh, your veterinarian, and ask if you could hang up that painting and leave some business cards. So that's another great no overhead or very little overhead because if you know if somebody hires you to do a pet portrait, then you've given them a price, you know how much you're getting, so whatever you have to buy for materials would come out of that final price. So it's, um, I assume you already have supplies because you're an artist and you're looking to uh, make it into a career. Some other very, um, uh, very easy things you could do that would be really popular would be like painting custom, like welcome signs and greeting signs, um, things like that for people's homes. You could do, just find something like that that's not being done a lot. I think with the Cricut machines, a lot of people are doing like signs and stuff with those, but if you can find a niche, find something that's a little unique, then people will start coming to you and asking you, hey, can you paint sunflowers on this whiskey barrel I have, this planter I have, or can you come paint this for me? Can you come that? Once you get a reputation for doing those custom works, people will start calling you, people will start posting and messaging you and um, and whatnot. And Facebook is a great marketing uh, place for something like this because you know you're sharing it on your personal page with people you actually know and and jobs like this tend to go from word, word of mouth because somebody will say oh I really would love to have this done and somebody will say oh I know somebody who does that here's their name or let me reach out to them and see if they want to um, do that I get a lot of offers like that I don't really do that sort of stuff anymore but um, people are always thinking about people they know and trust already in real life before they start like recommending businesses. So you've got a nice edge there and it's a way for you to kind of get going and maybe, you know, put together some seed money to start something bigger. Like maybe you want to rent a space so you can do classes in your own space, but you kind of need to have a certain base level of students before you can do that. Otherwise you might not make rent. So um, this is kind of how you get started. It's one way to get started. There's lots of other ways. And I would love to hear what you have to say. If you have any, um, I don't want to say get rich quick schemes because you're not going to get rich, but any get started in, in an art business um, uh, tips or things that have worked for you, please post them in the comments below and that way you can help each other out. Honestly, all it is is you gotta you got to connect with the people that find value in what you offer and that's how you make a successful business. And things like that is a great way to start out because you don't need to have a YouTube channel with a million followers. You don't need to have an Instagram page with a million followers. All you need is some meaningful connections in your local community. And um, I mean, teaching art, do you get more of a connection than teaching art to somebody? So um, there's some ideas for you. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope it gives you the confidence to go out and try something like this in your community if it's um, if it's a goal that you have, if it's something you want to do. I love doing the art parties, um, especially because I was like in my early 20s, had tons of energy, and it was just fun to be around all those kids. Um, so yeah, maybe something that you want to try too. 
And with that, I will bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!